Hello everyone, my name is Pixorius, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Here we are, all decked out in netherite gear from yesterday's episode, and you know what? I feel like seeing this netherite gear a little bit better, so I have been doing a little bit of research into resource packs, and I've downloaded a brand new pack from the Vanilla Tweaks website, which you can find at vanillatweaks.net, or the URL you can see here on the screen, and this should hopefully change the enchantment glimmer a little bit. There you go. It's a little bit less intrusive like that. I might make a couple more adjustments to it here and there, and you can still see that the items are enchanted, but it's just a little bit less. Yeah, there you go. Now we can see the true colors of this netherite armor, and I kind of like the scrolling effect. It might kind of get a little bit distracting, so I might see what I can do about animating that a little bit less or a little bit slower. But still, we have ourselves a bunch of enchanted netherite gear now, and I'm not going to be wearing all of it for this episode because what I plan to do today is go and explore some bastions. Now, piglins are at home in bastions. It is the piglins kind of structure, and I'm a little bit concerned that the piglins are not going to take a liking to me because piglins have very specific behaviors related to what kind of armor you are wearing. Specifically, they like people who are wearing gold and will attack anybody who is not wearing gold. Now, despite the fact that I have spent a lot of gold ingots getting this armor together because of the amount of uh, gold you need to make netherite, Piglins do not recognize netherite as friendly armor, so we will need to be wearing some gold armor if at all possible. And I have one golden helmet in here. Hopefully, this should be okay because hopefully we won't really take any damage while we are there. Having said that, I am planning on raiding a couple of bastions in this episode, and the first one I will not be raiding using a particularly good strategy. We're going to be going in there... We're going to be going in fast, we're going to be raiding the chests, and the piglins are probably going to attack us for that. And I will explain why that happens throughout the course of the episode. But later, we'll be going back, finding another bastion that we can raid, and trying to play things a little bit smarter. First of all, though, I would like to get myself a little, a little bit of enchanting done on this gold helmet, just so we can actually have some protection from it, because right now, this netherite helmet has protection for Unbreaking 3. We're not going to really require Respiration or Aqua Affinity when we go to the nether, but I would definitely like to have some sort of protection on it. And Blast Protection doesn't quite seem like the thing. Luckily, I have some Protection 4 books, I have a Mending book in here, and Unbreaking 2, I'm pretty sure I have an Unbreaking 3 stockpiled somewhere in here as well. Yep, we've got a couple in there. Perfect. All right, I will apply each of these once I've put together an anvil, because apparently I broke one last time I was here. Let's grab some iron out of the beacon box, and I'll put together a nice set of enchantments for this golden helmet. There we go. For 12 enchantment levels, we are getting protection for Unbreaking 3 and mending on this helmet, meaning that any of the durability that is still damaged in there is going to be repaired next time I gain any experience, which is very good. Now, I guess I have to downgrade... <sighs> I have to downgrade my beautiful new netherite armor for something a little bit more golden. There we go. <laughs> the gold hat is restored. And you need to wear a single piece of golden armor for piglins to like you, or at least to be neutral to you. And they, they will not accept any other gold equipment. They won't be happy to see you if you have a gold sword or something like that, for example. It is just armor as far as I know. Right. I think I've found at least one bastion out there in the nether, and we will try and find a couple more throughout the episode. Let's go see what we can find. While I was exploring the fresh generation of the warped forest out in this direction, I'm pretty sure I spotted, yes, there we go, a structure tucked into the netherrack over here. And this is our first bastion. As you can see, it is made pretty much exclusively of blackstone, blackstone bricks, and basalt. These are actually called polished blackstone bricks, and there are polished cracked blackstone bricks. I'll be using shorthand to refer to all of these because I honestly can't be bothered to say the entire name all of the time. We also have a little bit of gilded blackstone with the gold streaks in there, the little gold veins that you will find in those blocks, and we will leave that be for the time being. But that is actually a very unique block that cannot be crafted. It can only be acquired from these piglin bastions. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful about how we do that, but you can see a couple of blocks of it already present 
in the structure. I think I'm going to make my way up a little higher because it might make the most sense to tackle these things from the top down in much the same way that we do with other structures. And at least the top up here, yes, there we go, we got the advancement, those were the days. The top up here seems to be a little bit open, and as you will see right now, because I am wearing this gold helmet, the piglins could actually see me right now and are paying me no mind. They are being fairly neutral up here at the top of the tower. Obviously, if they are attacked, like any other neutral mob, they will do damage to you. They will start attacking you if you attack them. So that is something we are going to avoid for the time being. But you can see right here, there are quite a lot of piglins standing guard on this bastion. So clearly, they are guarding something a little bit special. The structure itself is making its way down into the netherrack and... Yeah, there are a couple of little winding corridors in here, here and there. Now, they're not going to worry too much about me breaking the walls of this place. They are not particularly protective over the structure itself and the blackstone. What they do prize highly, as you can tell from their choices of armor and their choices of friends wearing that armor, is gold. So if I end up trying to break the gilded blackstone that you can find in here, I am going to have a bit of trouble on my hands because the piglins are going to think I am stealing their gold. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful to make my way down here. You can see there is a lantern in here as well. So this is clearly an intentional part of the structure and not just a cave that's forming in the blackstone. Let's see where we get to. It looks like we are actually coming out at floor level in the forest. So there is a couple of openings in the structure elsewhere. And it looks like there is a section of this lower down. It looks like there's another lantern this way. But it doesn't seem like there is a great deal of loot to be found in this particular bastion. They are a bit of a maze though. And I'm not entirely certain about the structure of these things. If we should start digging through the walls here and there to see if there is something behind it. It looks like there might be just like a small chamber where the uh, fortress generation has made it act a certain way. Right, so I'm going to do a quick sweep around here just to check that there is nothing I have missed because a lot of bastions will contain loot chests that the piglins are going to prevent you from stealing from. Uh, and so it's going to be an interesting challenge if you find one of these that is a little bit more developed. But sadly, it looks like I am not seeing anything like that immediately. It looks like we might have to go searching further afield to find one that has a better example of Bastion loot. While I'm here though, I could take a shot at silk touching some of this gilded blackstone. And much like nether gold ore, this thing can be silk touched or it can be fortuned to turn it into nuggets. And I believe that if you mine it without silk touch, it still sometimes has a chance to drop itself. So there we go, we have acquired our first piece of gilded blackstone without too many piglins around. So hopefully they should not be too angry at me. And I'm fairly certain, although I'm trying to confirm this right now by wandering back up here, I don't think they will attack you if you just have it in your inventory. They have to be aware of you mining it, which can sometimes just mean hearing you open a chest or mine a block, or sometimes it can mean them just standing nearby while you're doing it. Let's try this block here, which is a little bit closer to the piglins line of sight. Yep, they have been snorting angrily, and now they are running after me. So now they know that I have been stealing from them. And that is something that you need to be a little bit aware of when you are raiding these structures, because chances are the piglins will get a little bit mad at you, and then they will send the hunting party out to get you. Of course, there are a few different ways we can protect ourselves from piglins, depending on the environment. Obviously, you can engage them in combat if you want to. They are also afraid of zombie piglins, and zombie piglins will scatter them, and especially if provoked by the piglins, the zombie piglins will go on the attack. I managed to get that guy to shoot one of the zombie piglins with a crossbow, and now you'll notice that the zombie piglins are not angry at me anymore. You'll notice that that has changed since the last update, where if anything, aggroed zombie pigmen, then they would be attacking players left and right. If a skeleton shot one, then all of the zombie pigmen in the area would then target the player as their next target. You'll see they have now gone back to being neutral towards me. This guy even came up and gave me a hug, which is very nice of him. Uh, but the rest of the piglins, as you can see, are scattered. They do not want anything to do with zombie piglins. They are kind of freaked out by them, which is good for me because that means I can sneak back into the bastion now that those guys are off my trail and hopefully we'll be able to grab a little bit more of this gilded blackstone. Oh, and having said this bastion was a write-off, we actually have a chest down here on the top of the structure. So the chests will generate lower down, but they can also generate higher up, it seems like. And with very few piglins around here right now, I think it is probably going to be okay for me to hop down here and take a look. 
Yeah, there you go. War pigs. That's the advancement you get for looting a chest in a bastion remnant. Yeah, now you'll notice this has a fair amount of loot in it so far. We've got some arrows, some iron nuggets, some gold, and a gold helmet, as well as some magma cream stuff for fire resistance potions. That is going to be very, very useful. Let's see if there is something further up in this structure as well, because it seems like there may be some multiple entrances here that I was unaware of previously. And oh, the structure is actually a little bit larger than I thought. There is an area here which is kind of got lava used as decoration. It seems like there is lava flowing down the sides here. So let me block that off and see if I can diminish the lava flow here so that I can head in and see if there is anything worth grabbing in here. Once again, I'm not seeing too many piglins right in this room, which is kind of good. There is a hoglin over there, I believe, so it may be that they are hurting the hoglins in some way. There is definitely a uh, precedent for that happening. I'm pretty sure hoglin stables can generate as part of structures like this. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of the scenery with me as I go, and I'm just going to be using that to make sure I can safely pillar around the outside here, making sure that we can get down and back up without worrying too much about falling in the lava. And I do have a fire resistance potion on me just in case, but I think we should be able to make our way in here. There we go. All right, we have some hoglins over here, which I could probably dispatch with a few swings of the sword. Yep, there we go. We can toss it into the air a little bit there. And this piglin is currently not angry at me, despite the fact that I have gilded blackstone on my hotbar. He seems to be perfectly happy with that. If I broke that block there, though, he would definitely be getting angry with me. Right. Well, this whole area seems a little bit more developed than I thought. A little bit more developed than I can see from the outside. And it's clear here that it has generated as part of the netherrack. But what is this? Over here we have... Oh, a little statue. This is very cool. This is not something I knew existed in these. Having looked at them in the development snapshots, but only seen them kind of briefly, this is clearly some sort of piglin statue with tusks, and it's a monument made entirely, it seems, out of gold blocks. Well, isn't that something? Let me see if I can excavate this a little better so we can take a look at it without the netherrack roof getting in the way. There we go. It does seem like the head just sort of cut off there, and I don't know if that's intentional or if the netherrack ended up replacing these blocks. But look at this. This is quite the bounty of gold blocks. There's even a few around the back as well, and I wonder if there's anything in the center. Well, no doubt when I start mining these, any piglins in the area are going to get very mad at me, but as long as they don't have a way of staircasing up to me, I might be able to take them out without them being too dangerous. So I'm going to clear the area around the outside of this, and there we go. You can see the angry snorting starts to pop up in the subtitles. I should check that my mob sounds are turned up, because I have been using my experience farms a little bit and hearing a lot of zombie pigman noises. There we go. I'm taking all your gold blocks, lads. What are you going to do? Come at me. <laughs> they are definitely getting angry somewhere, but where exactly that is, is unclear. Yep, there's one. All right, he's going to try and take a shot at me, but I'm going to take him out while I can. So we have definitely angered the pigmen in this area. Once again, if they do not transfer aggro between them, much like zombie pigmen, they will get a little bit less rowdy after a while. They will calm down and not be as angry towards the player. But there's every chance that if we meet line of sight with one of them, it's going to pass the aggro over to them. So we've got to be a little bit careful with what we do here. There are also some interesting ways of getting piglins to ignore you. Uh, we've shown one already with kind of getting the zombie piglins involved, but piglins will also get attracted and distracted by gold items. So if we take this out right here and whoa okay yep they they came out of nowhere didn't they well let's see if we can distract them by throwing a couple of gold nuggets on the ground nope it looks like maybe they would prefer gold ingots or perhaps the gold blocks i stole from over here <laughs> so let me back up into a corner and i can deal with these guys one by one there we go all right netherite sword doing work by the way this thing is actually doing quite a bit of damage i think those other piglins may have taken a bit of full damage so that might have been part of the problem so let me crack open a gold block and see if i can start distracting them with gold ingots instead because apparently gold ingots are a surefire way of getting a piglin distracted. You could maybe also throw some gold uh, armor on the ground or something like that. I believe they are distracted by anything that is gold and will try and pick it up, and that can potentially be a good way of players getting away. It's a little bit less reliable and harder to do on the fly than just running away or fighting back, but if you've got your wits about you and some gold on your hotbar, it might be an approach worth taking. 
For now though, having found a little bit of gold here and wanting to push my luck a little bit, I am going to do my best to hop down into here and see what else we can explore. So I'm hearing the snorting of pigmen around us, I'm not seeing anything much else around here and yep these guys are all just trapped in a hole okay i am going to leave them there <laughs> i'm perfectly fine with them being trapped in a hole right now because a lot of these guys can overwhelm you pretty quickly in much the same way zombie pigmen do they are also from what i can tell a little bit faster than zombie pigmen so they are a force to be reckoned with once they pick up their pace a little bit uh let's grab some of the cracked blackstone and build ourselves a little bridge over here to avoid the lava. I'm just trying to see if there is any way we can make our way down here. It looks like this piglin has been on the hunt for hoglin meat. There we go. It looks like this might be the lower part of the structure. It might bottom out around here. So let's see if there's anything else behind these walls that I can go and check out real quick. All right, another passageway down, another piece of gilded blackstone here and there, and the warrens of blackstone underneath here don't seem to conceal any loot chests as far as I can tell right now. They might be some here and there at the bottom of these staircases, but for the most part they are relatively empty, which is fine because this is a place you could very, very easily get cornered by an angry mob of pigmen. Yep, nothing around there. It is worth checking out some of these little alcoves and stuff as well, as far as I can see, because there seem to be occasional switchbacks and stuff like that, where if this bastion has generated the way it has, we will uh, potentially find a couple of things hidden behind those. Mostly what I'm seeing here though is the gilded blackstone and I'm gonna grab a couple more blocks of that. We've got eight so far and I kind of like the gilded blackstone texture. It does seem like, whoa, yep, yeah, it does seem like these guys are very keen on defending it and I need to make sure I'm aware of where my exits are because they are gonna get angrier and angrier at me. Oh, hello. We have a little pillar here with the chiseled blackstone texture, which has the trademark piglin snout emblazoned on it or engraved into it, I suppose. And so I'm wondering if maybe there might be some other stuff around here or if I dig into this. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. There are treasures buried inside here. And maybe that snout block, the chiseled texture, is actually concealing that from the rest of the world. Maybe that's actually a sign that there are secrets underneath here. Well, you know what? Uh, oh, there's another one there as well. I think I'm going to take these. I think I will just up and take these because I already have a fair amount of gold in my inventory and who's going to stop me at this point? And as far as I can tell, there is most definitely a radius in which piglins will get very angry at you for mining this stuff. But if you are far enough away from them, you notice I'm not seeing any of the snorting sounds in the subtitles right now, the piglins will pretty much leave you alone. And so it's probably a good idea to either clear out the area of piglins through some means or another, or potentially just deal with them all up front so that they can't get angry at you later. And while I was expecting there to be more chests down here, more loot to grab in that way, I have a feeling we'll probably have better luck if we go exploring and find ourselves a larger bastion that we can see better from the outside. So I'm gonna make my exit. I'm gonna head down here to one of the openings in the bastion wall, and I'm just gonna fling myself out into the lava, right? So let's do that. <laughs> there we go. We have made our escape. And let's take a look at it from this side to see how much of that structure we can actually see. Yeah, it is relatively concealed inside the netherrack here. And when I was looking for these in the snapshots, I was finding them typically on the shores of lava lakes and in more exposed terrain. So let me go hunting, see if I can find one of these that we can really get a good look at from the outside. And I'll bring you guys back in when we're ready to do this the smart way. Finally, we have found an exposed bastion, and I can give you guys the coordinates if you're using my world seed or if you happen to pick up the world download the other day. We are at 600 and then 2360. It is quite a distance out from all of the existing terrain, and I have been through a bunch of other biomes. We actually cropped the nether quite close when I deleted some of the chunks, and it's quite easy to find some of the newer terrain. It is harder to find these things, especially one that sticks out in the way that this does. Maybe there are some that generate in basalt deltas which are slightly, I guess, a little bit more hidden because they are made of the same stuff that you find in the terrain all the way around the outside, but the bastions are kind of an elusive structure. More so I have found the nether fortresses. People have been complaining that nether fortresses are less common in this update, and that may be true because they do not start by generating in any of the uh, crimson or warp forests or basalt deltas. They start in a nether wastes or a soul sand valley and then they can expand out into the other biomes. But I have found a couple of nether fortresses on my way to tracking down this 
beast and this is actually really what I was hoping for. You already saw maybe as I was flying past there are a couple of large chests at the front here. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, this is going to be the main loot hub of these piglins who, as you can see right now, are behaving neutrally to me because I am still wearing my gold helmet. And here is an interesting PSA about piglins. Even if you bring your own chest or your own shulker box, they are going to get mad at you for opening basically any container. Watch as I put down this shulker box and open it. All right, they're not being too mad at me for that. Let me see if I can do that a little bit closer to them because, nope, that guy just got mad. That guy just got mad at me for no reason because I brought my own shulker box to this party. Hello? Even outside of the bastions, if you place down a chest and open it, they are all going to get mad at you like that. So it is, it is actually a little bit strange because it's going to be difficult to manage your inventory if there are piglins around, which is going to add another sense of danger to exploring the nether. And they will stay mad for a little while. That one down there still seems seems to be trying to pathfind to me, even though I am miles away at this point. So I'm going to fly away for a little bit, try and shake off their aggro a little bit. If some of them need to despawn, then that's what they can do. And then we'll circle back around and we'll actually raid this bastion the smart way. All right, lads, we good? Are we good? I think we are. Cool. I have left that chest down there. It is going to be there forever, probably. But these loot chests over here present a very tempting opportunity because there are four of them right here on this platform and they are ripe for the taking but i think we can come at this with a slightly sneaky strategy because not everything with an inventory counts as something that the piglins are going to get mad at you for opening and if for example i was to put a couple of hoppers underneath this then we could potentially start siphoning the loot out of the chest into the hopper and opening this hopper is not something they can get mad at me for so let's see what we've got we've got some of the new chains that's very exciting we have some spectral arrows some gold boots with soul speed three a brand new enchantment for the nether update fantastic that we got some of those let me take this gold chest plate let me get the bone blocks the arrows the gold sword some netherite scraps that's exciting all right let me grab the chains and stuff as well some more soul speed three boots what are the chances incredible right it looks like that loot chest is all drained and this guy keeping watch does not know a thing brilliant stuff all right let me take that hopper and let me move on we're gonna do this next one right underneath this guy's nose which is kind of a troll and it's kind of perfect at the same time i'm gonna try putting down a dropper here so that we have slightly more inventory space and see how we get on with that there we go we can move slightly underneath the hitbox of that chest and if this guy <laughs> this guy right here seems to know something is up but if i take a look in this dropper you'll see that we've got ourselves some gilded blackstone we've got a gold helmet some obsidian and crying obsidian doesn't know a thing he does not suspect that we are stealing all of his precious loot out from under him and we can break that dropper and the hopper without them worrying. Now, if I break any of these chests, they're going to get really mad at me. But in the meantime, we're able to just dig underneath each of the chests and siphon out the loot using a hopper with no consequences. It's actually really great that this stays in the game. It's a fun, smart way of figuring out exactly how to get stuff from these piglin loot chests without them getting mad at you. And I enjoy the stealth aspect that is happening here, <laughs> despite the fact that this guy clearly is onto me. We could also potentially distract him with something else. Let's say, for example, I throw on the ground a gold chest plate. There, you see, he will run, he'll pick it up, he'll take a look at it, and I think he's just going to put that away or throw it back down on the ground. I don't think he's interested in bartering anything of that for me, but if I get myself a gold ingot from somewhere, chances are they'll be more interested in bartering that. I'm excited about how many of these new chains we have. The crossbow and the gold armor, I'm not really that worried about. I think I'm going to leave that here on the ground and the piglins will probably pick it all up in a second anyway. I am keeping the boots with soul speed though. Yep, there you go. One, one guy immediately. <laughs> this, this guy is on the lookout for new fashion choices, it seems like. He is definitely in the mood. All right, uh, let's take this last chest. I'm just going to stick a hopper underneath this one and grab what I can. The unfortunate thing is right now, I can't transfer any of this loot into my shulker boxes until I'm a little bit further away from these guys. There's a full gold block in there, and yay, we got another piece of unique loot from the Bastion, a snout banner pattern. Yet another set of golden Soul Speed 3 boots. It looks like those are actually a little bit more common than I was initially expecting, but that is not a bad haul, I have to say. I'm pretty happy with what we've got here. The one thing I would really love to find if we can get one is the Pig Step music disc, but I have a feeling we'll probably track that down 
either in another bastion or in another part of this one, potentially. But that is really the best strategy for not messing with the piglins too much. If you want to make sure that you can loot the bastions without worries about them attacking you, bring hoppers and other containers with you that are not going to be something the piglins will get mad at. If you bring a shulker box or a chest, I think even trapped chests will count. They will definitely get mad at you for messing with those. But if you bring a dropper or a dispenser, something redstone style that has one of those types of inventory, then you'll be able to filter everything out, take a look at the loot, see what you want to discard, and bring the rest home. It's exciting times having new structures to raid and new strategies with which to do it. I like the fact that we have some new chains at last. We can take a look at those a little bit later, but for now I'm going to drop all of this in the shulker box and I'm going to see if that bastion has any more chests that I can raid. It does look like there are a couple of staircases further down into the structure, but again we end up in this kind of winding warren-like hollow underneath the bastion where it's all blackstone. It almost feels like going caving in the overworld, but with blackstone instead of regular stone. Stone. Let's mine our way through the outside portions of the structure and see what we can find. I did notice there was also a bit of an outpost, like there was a section that went off to, to the side. And, oh, okay, this looks like snout blocks down here. I wonder if there is anything underneath the surface that we can grab or if that is just part of the overall... Oh, no, it looks like we have found a vault. Very cool. Okay, so there is no complex redstone at work here. We're not going to be messing around with any kind of retractable doors or anything. This is just an area where the piglins have stored a fair amount of gold blocks, it looks like. And I'm going to grab as many of those as I can and hope that they do not see me right now. I, I can see some angry snorting happening. Yeah, there we go. Wow. Okay, he, he immediately came down and started appraising one of the gold blocks I was stealing from him. That... That was a little bit sudden, and I got a little bit surprised by that, but hopefully, once again, we'll be able to make our way out of here without too much harm done. There we go, took out the ranged attacker, the crossbow guy came after me as well. I can tell that a few of them are still mad at me, but hopefully I should be able to make my escape. Alright, I've given them a bit of time to shake off the aggro. You'll notice that the bastions themselves are actually pretty deep structures. Those go all the way down to lava level and potentially below. So there may be a lot more to explore underneath there than I'm giving it credit for at this point, but I'm finding that you typically see the loot chests up on the surface, or there are potentially going to be some areas further down where you will acquire a little bit more loot here and there. But I, yeah, I see something else over there that's a little bit more gold exposed to the surface. I wonder what the best way of tackling this is going to be. There is also an exposed section in the center of this little arena, and I have a feeling that there is a loot chest there that we will definitely want to take a look at. So let me hop over here and take a quick look around the outside in case there are any other chests. Because these structures are so ruined and so complex, it seems that you will end up with a lot of stuff unexplored if you don't look around them very, very carefully. Let me hop over to there. There we go. And hop down here because we have another chest. I need to be a little bit more wary about the ones that are generating close to lava as well because we might end up losing items if I try and place a hopper underneath some of these chests and then breaking the hopper and it falling into lava afterwards. Looks like that one had a gold block and a few ingots as well as some arrows which I will just leave behind I think or just collect them I guess when I break the hopper. Uh, let's chuck out some of those because I have far too many arrows at this point but it makes sense right? The piglins are stockpiling arrows for their crossbow wielding friends. That is going to make a lot of sense. Now out here when you find an area like this in the center, there is sometimes a pile of loot. In this case, it seems like they have collected some nether wart from a fortress, which must count as a win for them. <laughs> I think that's kind of exciting. All right, let's hop over here. Let's break underneath this. And it looks like there is not really a place where I can put down any kind of protective barrier. So we may end up losing a hopper to the lava here, but it might be worth it just to see what the contents of this chest truly are. There we go, we got some iron nuggets, we got some gold boots. Really? Is that it? Just some gold nuggets and a crossbow? Ah, oh, fair enough. I was hoping for something a little bit cooler in there because occasionally these chests may have a chance to have things like the new music disc, Pig Step, in there. You might have a chance for things like uh, netherite scraps and even netherite armor in some cases it may potentially lead to some cooler stuff. But I think we might be able to explore a little further around here and see if there are any more loot chests to be discovered. I have been calling these things bastions, but they are more accurately termed bastion remnants. According to the game's code and the literature that they have put out around all of these uh, snapshots and everything and the, and the full release of this update, 
Bastion Remnants is the official name for these things, and it makes sense because they do appear to be broken down structures, kind of a remnant of the piglins' previous lives here in the nether. They're sort of regressed into a more primitive civilization from what they maybe once were. And the lore, of as far as we know, the, the information that's been put out there, hints at the fact that piglins are the ones responsible for netherite and ancient debris in the first place, which makes sense, right? Because it's stuff that is netherite scraps covered in gold when you craft it yourself. But piglins may have originated netherite, and the fact that there is ancient debris everywhere is the leftover bits of their once proud civilization. And I like that. I like a little bit of lore creeping into Minecraft here and there, giving us some more stuff to speculate about. I think that's pretty fun. Well, all I'm seeing right now, from this vantage point at least, and from a quick sweep of the surrounding area, is just a few more gold blocks here and there. And I don't really feel like tangling with the pigmen at this point. I am having enough fun just exploring this structure on my own and getting less involved with the combat side of things. So I'm going to leave these gold blocks as they are and I'm going to make my exit. But there you go, folks. There is a smart way to raid these bastions. And in my case, it basically just involves dropping a hopper under a chest, draining the contents and then leaving everything else alone. But I am going to find my way back to my nether hub and I think I will probably leave you guys here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.